CMQ investors, what's going on? This is Chris Franco. And I have to tell you guys, I decided to sell some of my Alibaba. The situation has changed and I'm implying one of the most important lessons I've learned as an investor. And I'll share that with you in this episode. Yes, I have been bullish on Alibaba in the past. This bullish, that bullish, baby. Paid 40 grand for these, all right? It doesn't feel good to sell my Alibaba, but at least I can hold on to one of my dogs for comfort. It's my Sears photo. Back to this. Okay. Serious mode, what's changed? There is a war going on. There is a lockdown for COVID in China. I've seen how extreme the CCP can be in terms of putting their thumbs down and saying, this is the way things are gonna go. And if you don't like it, then too bad. Some people are yelling out, we're starving. Oh my God. I also thought that Alibaba had gone through the worst of the regulatory, call it pressure, but it seems like the regulations and the scrutiny coming from the CCP is only continuing. Basically, the information has changed. The facts have changed. So either I have to be stubborn and continue doubling and tripling down on Alibaba, or I have to look at the situation and say, is this the best thing that I can do with my money right now? Now, this brings us to this idea called the disposition effect. The disposition effect tells us that as investors, we have a tendency to sell our winners too soon and to hold our losers for too long. Let's focus on the second part. Hold losers too long. Speaking of losers, what do you think, buddy? So? So Alibaba has been a loser for me. Generally speaking, I like to cut my losses, but that's not the tendency most investors have. That's not our typical psychological tendency. Reason is this, it feels really bad when we acknowledge that we were wrong. And the only way to really acknowledge that is to take the loss. So by selling Alibaba, I have to basically sell it for less than I bought it and I have to just eat that. But the other approach is to wait until things get back to where you initially bought and then say, well, then I'll sell at that point. A lot of people do that. There's two things that can happen. It may never get back to that point or it could take a long time to get back to that point. And all the while, thinking about the idea of opportunity cost here, your money could be doing something more productive or you could be doing something more productive with your money. Now, as an investor, long-term, my goal is to beat the S&P 500 by one percentage point over the course of my investing lifetime. And I'm on track to do that. I've had some great gains in the last three and a half years or so. And look, even with this lot, this loss with Alibaba, I still can live to see another day. Rather than go down with the ship, I think it's better for me to cut some of my losses and put this money into something that I know is going Going to guarantee that I do no better or no worse than the S&P 500. And that's the VU. Not investment advice, obviously, but I just want to tell you what I'm doing. And I'll share my actual portfolio allocation in a future video. So make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. I share this periodically when there's big updates to show because I want to be as transparent as humanly possible. So I don't want to go down with the ship. And that's the thing what most investors do is they'll say, well, you know, I'm already so committed especially when I've been out here talking about how Alibaba's, you know, I think it's a big opportunity. I'm very bullish on it. I even changed his name to Alibaba. What's your name, dude? Alibaba. What's your favorite stock? Alibaba. I've said all this stuff publicly. So it makes it even harder for me to come out and publicly say, hey, you know, I think I was wrong. What have I done? And I wasn't wrong at the time, but the information has changed. And I either need to go down with the ship or be a rational investor and cut some of my losses and put that money into something productive that I have a lot more comfort and confidence in the long-term stability of. You know, going down with the ship, there's nothing cool about going down with the ship. I never understood in the movie The Titanic why the captain insisted on doing that. Like he could have easily just gone out and drowned in the water with everybody else. But he's like, no, I'm, I'm just going to go down to my cabin and let the, the water pressure break the windows and die in a cold whirlpool. And if you read the YouTube comments, people are like, God, he's that man at heart. No, there's no heart in that. That was just, that was just stupid. Sorry, no disrespect to him personally. I'm just being as a thematic idea here. You don't need to go down with the ship. You know, cut your losses. Live to see another day. Cutting this position, I don't know how much I'm gonna cut it yet, but probably a decent amount. I can do something more productive with that money. And then that percentage that's still in Alibaba, if Alibaba does do great over time, it'll probably be a wash. And that's fine, because I'm not trying to do 10 percentage points better than the S&P. I'm trying to beat the S&P by one percentage point over the next 20 or 30 years. We'll call it 30 years. If we think about, you know, how old I'll be when I retire, and I'm only 12 years old now, so you, you get the idea. Um, on that note, let me know what you think. Let me know your thoughts if you have any questions for me. Thanks so much for watching. Watching. I hope you don't mind the mic quality on this. I was having some issues with the mic, so I'm doing the uh, the camera mic now. But let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching. We'll talk soon.